Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the May 31st, 2016 VISTA Planning Commission meeting. Commissioner Fleming, will you lead us through the pledge, please? Sure. Ready? Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Let's see, where are we? Ms. Turley, can we can you do the roll call for us, please? Commissioner Carroll? Here. Commissioner Fleming? Here. Commissioner Gerritsen? Here. Commissioner Jekyll? Here. Commissioner Looney? Here. Commissioner Rosler? Here. Chairman Kramer? Here. Student Commissioner McKenna Rudabush? And Student Commissioner Acevedo? Not here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, commissioners, before you, you ha are the minutes from the April 5th meeting. Are there any changes that need to be made to the minutes? If not, can we see a motion, please? Commissioner Jackal, followed by Commissioner Gerritsen. I move approval of the minutes of April 5th. I would second that motion. Thank you. Please vote. Let the record show that the minutes pass unanimously. Mr. Connolly, are there any agenda changes for this evening's meeting? So I uh, wanted to note for the commission that there was an item that was uh, noticed for the Guahami Park Academy um, special use permit that was <coughs> removed from the agenda. Tonight's agenda only has the CIP, so uh, that project will be brought back at a later date, yet to be specified, and will be re-noticed. Okay, thank you very much. All right, um, commissioners, before we begin this evening, are there any disclosures that need to be made? on any item no nope. okay now would be the the time during our um planning commission meeting uh -huh. oh i'm sorry I commissioner have Looney? one that was for the your mic um, that was for the Oklahoma school i did meet with carl higgins and i did meet with um lindsay asia who is the Guahomi Schools representative. Um, Mr. Higgins was in opposition to the project and then of course a school uh, representative. They, there was three that I met with. That was all. Okay, thank you so much. Um, if there's any other, I'm assuming um, uh, Mr. Conley, disclosures of that sort wouldn't be appropriate for something that's not on this evening's agenda? Um, I would recommend that the disclosures be made when the item comes back to the commission. Okay. All right. Commissioner Jackal, Commissioner Gerritsen, got it. Okay. Um, is there anyone here this evening that wishes to speak on any item that is not on this evening's agenda? Okay. Seeing... Yeah, just fill out a speaker slip and bring it up, or come on up and you can fill one up, fill one out afterwards. Oh. Oh. No, we're not meeting on. Yeah. Go quickly. Yeah, they're all gone. <laughs> Don't rush. 
Okay, so on this evening's agenda, we have um, action item A1, the 2016 uh, capital improvement budget, CIP budget. Uh, Mr. Connolly, would you like to lead us through that, please? Thank you, Chairman and Commissioners. Um, as you know, we come to you every year with a CIP um, update. The Commission is required to make a finding of conformity with our general plan for any items that we're putting into the CIP. So uh, rather than provide you with an exhaustive overview of um, all the projects in the CIP, we typically just provide you with an update of the things that are added this year. So um, that's all I intended to do today. Do you have the PowerPoint, Ms. Chow? Thank you. So um, the CIP is a five-year budget, as I mentioned, so we, um, we update it annually, but it provides funding um, or budgeted resources for a five-year period. Uh, we review it every year and provide updates to it with uh, programming and budgets, projects for future years. As I mentioned, the state law requires the Planning Commission to find conformity with our general plan. <clears throat> so the CIP includes multiple categories for different projects, streets, signals, drainage, sewer, Parks and Rec, public facilities, and housing are the main categories. This year we have projects in three new areas, or three areas of the plan, public facilities, which is a downtown parking lot, streets um, for Paseo Santa Fe phase two, and Buena Sewer for the Shadow Ridge Reclamation Facility Yard, and I'll cover each of those individually. Um, first in public facilities, there uh, was a approved um, property swap by the city council uh, earlier this year. Um, to obtain land off of Broadway and construct a public parking lot. That includes the properties at 353 and 360, I believe it is, um, that are shown here in the red. Um, the Altura Paint Building and the former King and Queen's Beauty Salon. The ultimate intent is to um, demolish the buildings and redevelop the property with a public parking lot um, with the potential to ultimately expand uh, vertically in the future and build decks if additional parking is needed downtown. I've also provided the goals in, this, in the general plan that um, apply to this type of a use in the um, public facilities element. It calls for providing public resources like parking to support uh, the needs within the city and in the circulation element it calls for ample public parking in the downtown area. In the streets category, Paseo Santa Fe phase two, this is the next phase of Paseo Santa Fe that was just completed, so it would extend in the red um, here from Ocean View uh, south down to just past Terrace Drive. Would include a new roundabout at Guahomey, um, where the signal is today, and so we're in the property um, right-of-way acquisition phase for that, but uh, construction could start as soon as next year. We have uh, funding from a number of different sources, including some grants from SANDAG, uh, as well as um, funding left over from the current construction project. And so uh, conformity with that is mentioned there and goals in the circulation element uh, one through three and six, which support a pedestrian friendly uh, downtown environment that's being created by this project. Last is the Buena, Buena Sewer. Uh, this is their former water reclamation facility in Shadow Ridge off of uh, Lupine Hills. It's shown in the red here. The, the property is much larger than the area in the red. I just highlighted the area where the improvements would occur. Um, piping and um, pumping for uh, wastewater uh, overflow emergency facilities are within. They need to do some upgrades to that as well as add some um, parking facilities and potentially canopies, things like that for the equipment out there. And with that, the staff is requesting that the commission find conformity with uh, the general plan for the next year's 1617 CIP. And I'm available for any questions, thank you. Thank you, commissioners. Are there any questions regarding these three specific CIPs before we talk about any others? Commissioner Carroll? Thank you, Chairman. Mr. Conley, just a curiosity question on the Paseo uh, street improvements. On the two side streets, the Guahomey and the other side street, what kind of improvements would those be generally? Do you know? Um, <clears throat> we're still in the final design here, but the tentatively the roundabout, the second roundabout in the series would be at Guahomey and would replace the signal. 
and so we're in the right-of-way acquisition on some of the properties surrounding that intersection to accommodate that roundabout. In the prior design, I don't know if you remember, we brought Terrace Drive and Guahomi Drive together with one roundabout, and so we started acquiring properties to make that connection occur. But there's a critical property there that we really can't acquire because of the cost of it, and so we've now shifted the roundabout down to Guahomi. So that, that, that's where that will occur. At Terrace, it will just be a crosswalk, a pedestrian walkway that'll be marked by um, pavers in the street, comparable to what Phase One has. Okay, thanks. Commissioner Gerritsen. Yes, Mr. Conley, could you go back to the second slide, or Patsy, whoever's doing that, the one that covers the various subjects or the various areas Categories. for the uh, CIP? That. So ex explain to me why we're only looking at a limited number of projects versus the whole, uh, all of those. For instance, uh, public facilities, parks. So we only bring the projects before the commission on an annual basis that are new projects that are being added into the CIP, projects that are in there that um, are existing from past years. Uh, were found to be uh, in conformance with the general plan in a, at a past time, so we don't hash through all those gotcha. again. If you have any specific projects in mind that you're interested in that are in there or that could be forthcoming, I could try to answer those questions, but we only shared with you what was added this year. Would now be a good time to ask those questions? Sure. Um, specifically, my, my question would be on uh, basketball courts. As many of you know, the schools have really increased the fencing around all the basketball courts in the city to where there's literally almost no access to the school basketball courts for the local uh, area. There's no going over having a pickup game or anything like that. It's uh, during school hours, it's totally fenced in and even after school hours, there's limited access. So we've gone from 30, basically 30 ba outdoor basketball courts to about two or three. Well, there's about eight or nine that are city owned, not controlled by the schools. And um, so it would seem to me that's, that's a need we really need to address uh, with the city. Uh, and I want to tie that a little bit to parking. I mean, it would seem to me that we could take all these extra spaces that people are talking about that are unused during the day and make basketball courts on those parking areas, some sort of a limited fencing or security, and leave it up to the individuals. In other words, give them that option that they could create a basketball court there or something. The other side of that is, you know, having the CIP reflect the needs of the community. You know, we just created two new uh, skate parks. But at the same time, we've basically reduced 30 basketball courts by the, uh, by the security. Uh, I've talked with the school board. I've talked with uh, the, the city, Ali Zimmerman, and the new parks and rec director about this. So I'm not sure what direction we can go on this, but I, for one, would like to see that addressed. What are we going to do about access to basketball moving forward? So I heard from uh, the assistant city manager today that you had brought, uh, brought this item up, and she indicated that the Parks and Rec Commission had asked for a facility needs assessment um, of some kind to evaluate what's the need for basketball courts or other recreational mm -hmm. types of uh, improvements okay. at the park system throughout the city, and that they'll be coming back with that. That is most likely what we would be looking at before we made those kinds of decisions, but your comments are certainly noted in the record and we'll provide those to the council. All right, thank you. Yep. Commissioner Fem Fleming, please. Couple of things. Uh, one is, what is our actual responsibility here? We, do we have the responsibility or the, the ability to either add items or take items off or, or, or is our responsibility as a planning commission just to take what's on that list and see if it qualifies basically under the 
zoning and that sort of thing. Uh, is that where, do we have the ability to add things or <clears throat> take not or track things? No. That's what I We thought. are simply asking for the Planning Commission to make a con finding of conformity, conformity for these projects. So are these projects consistent with the general plan? That's the extent of what we're asking. However, if you have comments about the CIP or specific projects you're looking for, now is always a great time to provide those comments so that we can give those to the council. They're on the verge of adopting this year's uh, budget, right. but <clears throat> these kinds of comments come into play when we plan for next year's you know, budget, which is only a few months away, actually. Right. So Okay, well, I, I just had a couple of other comments. One is that that roundabout that you've moved now to that's going to actually be at the light there on Guahomey, that's going to put two roundabouts very close together in close proximity, in my opinion. Um, I think that you, you've got a bottleneck there anyway when you're narrowing this down to two lanes, and, and I've heard a lot of people complaining and, and speaking about that, and I just wanted to voice their opinions, their voice here. Uh, but by two, putting two of those roundabouts right next to each other, that's, that's really close. And um, I, th I think that, that's what I had. I had one other thing, but I think that was covered in the okay. last discussion. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Jackal, please. This would probably come under streets. And you remember back when Branding Iron Drive was Escondido and the Carriage Hill residents were very concerned that their Escondido would be connected with the Escondido that then became Civic Center Drive. Um, is that still in the plan? That is in the circulation element of the general plan. However, it's not in the CIP. We don't have a project um, in there or a budget for that at this time. So it's not within the next five years in terms of what we're envisioning for construction in that time frame. But it is still in, in the circulation plan. Correct. In 2012, when the general plan was updated, the decision was made to leave that in there. And we had a pretty extensive debate over that issue at that yeah. time. Okay, just checking. Thank you. Commissioner Gerritsen. Just a clarification on the uh, Buena Yard improvements. Um, is that the one on in Buena Vista Park by the creek? In uh, other words, if you go, because. No. No. It's kind of near there, but uh, if you look in the overhead here, this area to the right is a Green Oak Ranch. It's down here. And um, Shadow Ridge Park is up past here on Lupine Hills Drive. This is Lupine Hills right here. So this is an RV storage facility for the Shadow Ridge Association. And there's oh, a okay. driveway that goes back in here. So uh, the Green Oak Road is here. That, that answers my question. Somehow I was mixing that up with the Buena. There's a pump Vista station Park, down there. The pump station. I want to make sure I wasn't. It's not planned to be improved. They are looking at that for uh, some maintenance uh, repairs, but not in any kind of. They have done some work over there recently. That's why I guess I connected it. Thank you. Commissioner Carroll, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, so this is maybe an off the wall question, but with the parking uh, and, the, and the downtown property, is that in the VB? BA area? Yes. And so will that, is there a mechanism to pull that out of the VVBA as, or um, would the city become an owner entity member in the VVBA? So it's city owned property um, and we would maintain it as public parking. It's within the VVBA, but I don't know, does, this, does the city even pay into the VVBA or is that only for businesses? Um, I, I believe I, I would need to look at the ordinance to be sure. Um, just curious how that would play out. I don't, I don't yeah, care. I'm just. I do think it applies to businesses. And so if I had to venture a guess, I would say there wouldn't be a, a voting just to exclude share by. or an assessment imposed, but it would really be governed by the ordinance. And to refresh my memory, I would need to look at the ordinance. Yeah. We have a couple of existing public lots downtown now, so they would be equally affected. Could I comment on that? Sure, I'm about to make a motion, but um, I see a couple more <laughs> questions up, so I'll, I'll, I'll leave it for the questions. Sure, sure. Commissioner Fleming. Anyway, the, this, the VVBA 
is a business organization, so the city would not be owning a business unless, I assume, unless you had got to the point where you were setting up paid for parking and then that would be a business. But uh, also the, the VVBA does not collect dues or anything anyway. It's the uh, business improvement district, the Central Vista business improvement district that would cover the, 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 the fees. And again, it would only be applicable if you had a business there, not property, where they are looking to develop some sort of a property district for parking purposes, but that's something in the future. So thank you for allowing me to step in there. Commissioner Rossler. Mr. Conway, on the Buena uh, Vista sewer facility, are they gonna expand the footprint of the site at all? No. Okay, all right. Um, when this first got started, uh, when they were grading, we found a significant archeological resource out there that uh, brought the whole operation to a screeching halt until the archeologists got comfortable, comfortable again. So just <coughs> checking on that. I have a question, um, please. Mr. Connolly, regarding the South Citrus public parking lot, the impact on operating budget says $1,000 ongoing for watering and maintenance, but it doesn't specify whether that's $1,000 a year, $1,000 a month. Yeah, I believe that was an estimate for a monthly cost to maintain the property. Does it make any sense to amend the CIP so it says, you know, appro you know yeah, monthly will, approximate or? Uh, I'll let the finance folks know that. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Um, Conley, I was just, um, I did have a chance to ask Mr. Atterbury, who's uh, referenced on the, um, the sheet, and I think he was trying to estimate it on a yearly basis. So. $1,000 a year? That's what he indicated to me. Deal. <laughs> okay. Cheaper than my water bill. Uh, I have one other question, and that is regarding... Uh, Paseo South Santa Fe streetscape improvements, and I understand that the roundabout will be where Guy Lumber is in that area. Um, is Guy going to do any improvements, or are all the improvements basically the improvements that the city's doing uh, along the street sidewalks? Yes, everything that's in front of Guy Lumber will be the city's improvements. They um, have not. None of the property owners really are um, being asked to make any specific improvements other than concessions for the construction activities themselves. We will have to acquire a small piece of Guy's property to make the roundabout work, so we're working on that, as well as some of the other corner properties there. Um, but no, no, no changes that I'm aware of at this time to Guy Lumber. Okay, in your valuable experience when cities do these um, enhancements that are absolutely beautiful do some of the businesses say wow you know if i just you know made my signage a little bit or i just painted my building does that ever happen do do people do the business owners follow suit well, i think you see a pretty good example of that in phase one okay i mean you know uh the flying pig and um the improvements to the uh, uh the corner property there at eucalyptus it used to be the feed store i mean those are People, I think, chose to make improvements based on the fact that we were investing in the area, and we're anticipating we'll see a similar pattern as we move down the street. Yeah, I would, I would hate to see some of those um, automotive repair places go away, but, you know, a little sprucing up would, would really be nice. We will work with the businesses there to try to keep them in town, relocate them. Good. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Carroll, please. If um, I live near Guahomey there, so for whatever reason, that, that little street between Guybe and the, and the property across the street is, is just constantly being tagged. And, um, you know, because it's just hidden enough, I guess. So, you know, opening that up, you know, could only help uh, that area, I think. But anyway, I want to make a motion to approve the item. Uh, I don't have the item number in front of me. Approve it as written. It's just an action item. Um, I will second second the, that motion. Uh, Commissioner Garrison. I was just going to second. So. Oh. Do we need to vote? Oh, thank you. Please vote. Yeah. 
Let the record show that the action item for the 2000 CIP budget, uh, the Planning Commission is recommending to the City Council for to accept the item as is. Items. Okay. All right. What do we got next? Looking at all my old ones. Um, notes, comments from the city attorney. So um, our next meeting will probably be June 21st. Um, we will likely have a couple of items on it. Uh, the Guamie Park won't be back that soon. It's probably a few, couple months out. They have to do an environmental document before it can come back. So we'll, we're expecting it toward the end of the summer. And like we said, it to be re-noticed. Um, Patsy's going to give you an update on the parking uh, code discussion that we had with the council last week, but I also wanted to mention the governor's office has a proposed um, streamlining affordable housing uh, bill that's moving through the state. It's got some real significant implications for us locally because it would essentially take the discretionary decision-making authority that we currently have out of our hands and make projects that uh, meet certain housing criteria ministerial meaning we would have to approve them if they met certain criteria uh, So it's a little troubling for us. It takes the public review away. It takes the environmental review away it takes the Planning Commission and the City Council's decision-making authority away um, So we have written a letter to the state in opposition to it. There's a summary from the um, League of California Cities That's pretty good. I'll give it. To, I have copies for everyone to take with you and read up on it But I just want to mention it's something worth uh, researching and with that, I'll hand it off to Patsy. So uh, last Tuesday, we had a discussion with the uh, City Council on the parking code update effort. And uh, we brought before them um, the draft recommended changes for uh, the consultant, work parking. And uh, another long discussion, we received um, direction from the council to um, look at some additional multifamily projects in the city to help support what has been recommended at this point from Walker Parking and mainly related to the apartments, um, the uh, residential component of the parking ratios. Everything else seemed to be not as much on uh, part of the, the majority. The bulk of the discussion was really about the residential parking ratios. So we're going to uh, work with the consultant. Um, we're in the process of doing that and trying to work which ones and additional data that we're going to collect. Um, in order to share that with the uh, the city council in order to support the ratios, but um, all in all The uh, the recommended ratios are lower than what's currently in the books um, And there are several speakers um, from BIA uh, Developer was there that's currently processing a project so they got to hear um, some testimony from some of the the folks out in the community and what they are seeing and how that would help them or not help them in terms of the parking ratio. So, um, so hopefully we'll be coming back with some additional collection of data and then we can move this thing forward. Uh, Ms. Chow, by uh, your comment that the estimates are coming back lower, meaning that the parking requirements are less than what we currently have? Correct. Yeah, much lower. Some of them much lower than we currently have. Okay, uh, Commissioner Garretson, please. Okay. Commissioner Carroll, please. Ms. Chow, is the mixed use parking ratio in play? Yeah, we're looking at the concern that was raised many times before and, and basically utilizing the, um, what will be the recommended or whatever the change to apply in the mixed use zones as well for solely multifamily apartment projects. Um, so it'd be an equal playing field kind of uh, in terms of when we're talking residential. But essentially, if you still have a mixed-use project, you'll still be able to use the, uh, the existing ratios in the mixed-use zone right now if you truly have a mixed-use project. So okay. we're trying to correct that loophole. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Fleming? Speaking of the mixed-use projects, the, the new apartments that have just been built uh, on Paseo Santa Fe, uh, there's all open underneath there. Is there any indication of what is coming there as far as retail, uh, retail establishments or 
what kind of businesses they're talking about or mm. any clo thing on that? I'll let Mr. Conley. We are still waiting to hear from the brokers um, as to who's going to go in those spaces and nothing's been finalized yet. I think there was a lot of waiting till the park and the parking and all the improvements were done and so it's been a relatively short time since that's all been completed so we're hopeful that by early summer here we'll know but uh, nothing yet. Any other new businesses coming to town? I don't, I can't think of any off the top of my head. No, we've, you mentioned Rosati's and all the yeah, previous ones, right? Yeah, you guys are up to date with everything. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that. Um, if there's no other comments, um, we are adjourned, 631. <laughs>